So now let's go on to the next technique here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to fake a popular look called HDR. So I'm going to open up these three images here that are in the cleverly named fake HDR folder. So I'm going to start out with this image right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and switch to the move tool so that we don't have that funky, weird brush cursor running around on our image. OK. So HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. And it is all the rage with photographers right now and designers to a certain extent because it produces a very surrealistic look. And I'm going to give you an example of what that looks like by just going ahead and running this adjustment. And then we'll talk more about it. OK, so I'm going to open up an image. <clears throat> and I'm going to choose the Image Menu, Adjustments, HDR toning. This is a new option in Photoshop CS5, so if you're not using CS5, you won't see it. And what HDR means is high dynamic range. So if you shoot an image, and let's say you're dealing with, uh, let's say it's sunset, okay, and you're in Hawaii. Well, if you expose for the sky, then your foreground is going to be extremely dark. If you expose for the foreground, then you're going to be able to see the foreground, but your sky is going to be extremely dark. So the theory behind creating high dynamic range images is that you shoot, bleh, you shoot several exposures, and then in Photoshop, you merge them all to create the perfect exposure. And perfect exposure is referring to where everything is able to be seen in the photo. Everything is exposed or illuminated. Okay, that's what HDR is. Okay, merging several exposures into one image where everything is perfectly lit. Oftentimes it yields a very surrealistic looking image. Well, in Photoshop, <clears throat> I'm not going to show you how to put them together. Um, but you certainly can. But what I want to show you is how to fake it. So we're going to choose Image Adjustments HDR Toning. A dialog box is going to open that has a wonderful menu of presets at the top. I bet all of y'all are going to be digging around in your preset menus from now on since we <laughs> saw all those presets in the Duotone dialog box. There's some good ones in here too, but they're not as, not as exciting as those. So let's take a look at one that really exhibits what a typical HDR image looks like. I'll choose surrealistic high contrast. Y'all have seen images like that, right? Okay. Or maybe let's see, I'll say photorealistic high contrast. That might be a little bit more accurate to, or similar to some of the HDR images that you've seen. Anyway, they typically end up looking quite high contrast, and they can have a little bit of an edge glow around the edges of the image. Okay, so this is a pretty cool thing. So even if you haven't set up your camera and you haven't shot the image in several different exposures, you can still fake it in Photoshop using this HDR toning box, which is pretty handy. So you can start off with one of these presets, and then you can use these sliders to fine tune it to make it look like you like. This is another great technique when you can't seem to fix the color in any other way, but the subject matter of the photo is really great. Okay, you can apply a little fake HDR look to it. So you can set all kinds of things like the edge glow. That's the, the, the glow that you can get around the edges of the image, kind of like the sharpening halo that you get if you over sharpen. So you can set that to be higher or lower, either one. So you just want to play around with these sliders to get the image to look like you want. And then down here at the bottom, you can adjust color and saturation. Vibrance and saturation are very similar, except for they both intensify color. Okay, but vibrance will not affect skin tones. So if you've got skin tones in your image, you really don't want to be boosting the saturation because you'll get hot pink skin, which is slightly unattractive. <laughs> so if we were dealing with an image that had people in it, I wouldn't be pumping up the saturation at all. You could use vibrance instead. So that's just a little ditty on 
creating a fake HDR image. And I will tell you that um, I didn't duplicate the image layer and run the adjustment on the duplicate layer because Photoshop would have forced me to flatten the document before I ran the adjustment. So there is no way to run that, run that adjustment non-destructively. There's just no way to do it because it's going to flatten your file. And I don't even think that you can run that adjustment on a smart object. It'll prompt you to rasterize the smart object as soon as you open up that dialog. So you just don't want to save over your original image name. But if you save this as a PSD and your original was a JPEG, you've created a copy of it anyway. So let's take a look at that on another image here. This is a really good one to apply an HDR effect to. And it, it's popular right now, so it allows the photo to stand out, grab somebody's eye. It's a little bit uh, unexpected in the colors that you can end up with. So again, we're going to go to the image menu, choose adjustments, HDR toning, and then just zip through the presets. I'm going to go ahead and choose surrealistic high contrast again, or actually, maybe that one will work a little bit better. And how about surrealistic low contrast? So you can get all kinds of effects with this. Another great reason to pop open your favorite beverage on a Friday or Saturday night, flip through all these different presets so they can be a lot of fun.